Let's take a look at Breeze's new API stack paired with the official front-end demo using Next.js. Let's start off with Breeze here. So Breeze now comes with an API option which does two things. So it only generates the code necessary to handle back-end requests when dealing with authentication. So anything front-end related like Blade, CSS, or JavaScript is now removed. This is because the front-end is now handled in a separate application, and in this case, Laravel has an official example using Next.js, which we'll take a look at in a second. This option also automatically configures Sanctum for you. So I have a blank Laravel app here. Let's go ahead and install Breeze first using Composer Require. Okay. And let's go ahead and install it with this new API option. Let's grab this. And notice how there's no npm install or npm run dev. That's because, like I said, the front end is now handled in a separate app. So let's install it with this new API option. Okay. And let's also make sure to migrate here. And I've already migrated, so there's nothing to migrate. So if you take a look at the routes, you'll see that it's a slimmed down version. So the routes are in this file. And like I said, anything front end related is now removed. So for example, the get request for showing the form for registering a new user is now gone. Same for the login page that the user typically sees. So it only generates the routes needed on the backend. Now the other thing it does is configure Sanctum for you. If you look at the docs, it says Breeze will add this new front end URL environment variable to your .env file. And I actually don't think it adds it in there. Front end. As you can see, it's not in there, but it is in the config app.php. Let's look for a front end here, and there it is. So you can put it in your environment file directly if you like, and eventually you do have to put it there when you put your app to production. So let's just put it there on the bottom, and let's just default it to localhost 3000, which is where our front end app will live. Now, if you take a look at the diff here, it also added some other configuration options for setting up Sanctum. For example, in our app HTTP kernel file, it enabled this ensure front end requests are stateful middleware. And also in our course config, it added some configuration here as well. You can see the environment variable being used in this allowed origins array. So yeah, that's basically all this option does remove anything front end related in the Laravel side and configure Sanctum automatically for you. Now let's take a look at the front end that Laravel provides. You can take a look at the example here. It's making use of Next.js which is a React server-side rendering framework. And if you scroll down, you'll see the installation instructions. And it also says to make sure you're running your backend on localhost, just so you don't run into cores issues. So where does it say that? Right here. So let's go ahead and run our backend using PHP artisan serve. Okay. So now it's running on localhost 8000. And after you clone it and run npm install, then it says to copy the env example file to env local and make sure you have this variable set. So let's do that. This is our backend, which is currently running, so that we can leave that. So let's go to our backend here. Let's open up that file or duplicate this file right here. The variable is set correctly, so let's just duplicate it and rename it to env.local in this case. And if I did everything correctly, that should be all the setup we need. So we can run npm run dev on our front end. And it should now run in localhost 3000. So let's go ahead and open this up in our browser. And as you see, it looks the same as the front end scaffolding if you were to use normal breeze, but now it's within a Next.js app. So let's just make sure everything is working. Let's go ahead and register a user or a new user. Okay, so if I hit register and everything is set up correctly, the communication between the front end and back end should be working correctly with Sanctum, and this should log us in automatically. So let's hit register here, and everything seems to be working, cool. Let's just verify that the other functionality still works. So let's go log out here. Let's log in. Obviously this should log us in, okay? And let's make sure that the forgot password flow works as well. So let me just set my backend for emails to log so we can see it in our Laravel log. So that would be mail mailer. Yep. Set this to log. Okay. Back to our front end. Let's go ahead and hit this route. 
Let's enter that email for the user I created. Okay. Let's check our Laravel log. Actually, let's go back to our backend here, laravel.log. And is there an email down here? There it is. And if you take a look at the link, it is pointing to the correct URL. So localhost 3000 is our front end. So if I were to grab this link here, let's go ahead and paste this into our browser. Let's just use this window here, let's paste that in. Okay. And we can change the password here. Let's reset that password. And let's try out that new password. And everything is working correctly. So I'm logged in here and say we wanted to add our information for the logged in user on this page. There is a quick example here. So we can use the use auth react hook here, provide the auth middleware, and then we can output the user's name here. So let's try this out. So back to our front end, let's look for that page it should be in components, maybe in pages it should be in dashboard. There it is. Okay, let's grab this hook here. We only need the user object here. So let's try that out. Let's get rid of the logout. Let's make sure to import use auth here. Okay. And let's go ahead and output some information here. So we can just use this and let's put it underneath here. So let's just make a new div here. Doesn't like Emmet because it's a JS file. So let's say username. And let's also add user email. So let me just get rid of this extra div. Let's add one more for user email. And you can see it's using optional chaining here with the question mark. So let's try that out, let's save that. Let's go back to our app. And there is information about the logged in user. Let's also take a look at the use auth hook, which is where most of the authentication code is happening. So it's within hooks, auth. Let's just walk through the code here and see where the sanctum endpoints are being used. So let's go to the login page. And you can see it's making use of this use auth hook here and destructuring the login method. And it's passing through these params, guest and redirect if authenticated. Let me just open up the browser. So we're on that page. So this form right here, and it has state for email, password, status, and errors. And there should be a method for actually logging in. That's right here. So that's when we hit login on this form here. Okay. So now the login method is within this use auth hook. And you can see it's making use of this use SWR library, which is a React library for data fetching. It's not too important here. Just know that whenever it resolves, it saves it to a data variable, which we're renaming to user here. And it also has other features like automatically refetching this endpoint here whenever we need to. So say for example, if we were to click off of this tab and then click on it again, this fetch call is going to run again. Again, not that important, but you can see it's making an endpoint call to API user. So if you remember in the Laravel side, if you go to routes API, you'll see that this is this endpoint here, which just returns the logged in user and it's behind an auth sanctum middleware. So now back to our front end, when we're not logged in, we should get an error. And if you take a look at dev tools here, you'll see that the server responded with a status of 401, which is correct. But now we're calling the login method, which is down here. So let's look for login right here. And you can see we're making an endpoint call to slash login. But before that we have this await CSRF, which is a part of sanctum, you have to make an endpoint call to this endpoint sanctum CSRF cookie, and then that sets the appropriate cookie in the browser. And then after that, you're able to make additional endpoint calls. So after we do that, we make an endpoint call to slash login. When that resolves, it's going to rerun this method up here. So it's going to call this endpoint again. This time it should be successful. Now user is going to change from null to an actual object because we are logged in at this point. And if you scroll down here, there is a use effect hook, which checks if this variable is set and checks if the user is set and it pushes to the redirect if authenticated method. So again, in the login page, we are setting that up here. So the middleware is guessed. 
the redirect is slash dashboard. So it does redirect to that page after we log in. So we log in. That whole flow that I just explained happens and we are redirected to the dashboard page. And that should be password two. There we go. If you're curious, we do have a React series here on Laracasts, which you can take a look at. I just wanted to show you the Sanctum endpoints that are being called and how this Next.js demo app handles everything. So yeah, if you plan on building a single page app, be sure to check out Breeze's new API option, along with the official demo using Next.js.